And with that, the Home Depot SEC on CBS brings us indeed to Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And our matchup, East against West, the Georgia Bulldogs and the Tigers of LSU. As you take a look at the standings in the SEC, we're at the midway point of the season, so the standings matter now. Georgia trying to keep a leg up on Kentucky and Florida. LSU trying to keep pace with Alabama in the West. And we welcome you, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler. This is the best game so far in the SEC. And because of the way the schedule is set up, it's a unique one. These two teams don't see each other very often. The last time they played was five years ago. The last time Georgia was here was 10 years ago. And they don't play here again until 2030. With that, it's a pretty tough ticket. As I bring in my partner, Gary Danielson, did any of the luster go off this game because LSU lost last week? No, not at all. I mean, you see teams that are ready to play each other, LSU will be ready. And, you know, the Georgia fans have been grouchy. I think Kirby's been <laughs> grouchy, but uh, I think this game will have it all. Georgia is ranked number two in the country, 6-0. and Their average margin of victory is 30 points. They've got the number two scoring defense in the country, and yet the Georgia fans, and you know who you are, are saying, oh, they're all right. Sounds like you have some firsthand yeah. knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when you've reached elite status, and I think this is the signal when Brad says the Georgia fans aren't happy, they're 6-0, and but they're playing against Ohio State, Alabama, the top of the food chain. Well, they need to be ready today. I thought they were ready early against South Carolina, but that game kind of fell apart. They should be ready today, and they come into this stadium with a couple players that are difference makers. Miko Hardman changes the defense because he can take a short pass, and you have to be ready for him with his speed to go all the way. Every play, LSU has to know where he is. And on defense, Georgia affects the other team because basically half the field has been eliminated because DeAndre Baker's been so good against the run or the pass, he's basically taken away half the field. We spent a good amount of time with LSU quarterback Joe Burrow yesterday. He wanted to take the, I guess, the blame for the loss last week at the Swamp, but man, he needs some help. He does, and, and quarterback takes the blame, and that's the way it goes goes but I agree with you you know who can step up from this LSU team today against this great Georgia team and make some plays where is he going to find some help how about a 50 50 ball that LSU comes up and makes the catch instead of the drops they had last week and going in to the fourth quarter Joe Burrow was the leading rusher Brissett got started late but today Joe Burrow needs help so he can make the plays in the fourth quarter. You can hear in the background the fireworks are starting already. The stadium starting to shake. The Tigers take the field. We'll check in with Jamie and kick it off in Baton Rouge when we come back. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Chick-fil-A. The Home Depot. Exxon Mobil and by Bud Light. Here we go again. It certainly has been a lot of high matchup of SEC Titans. Then wait for this. Let's go. Here comes the number two team in the country, the defending SEC champion, Georgia Bulldogs. Third member of our crew, Jamie Erdahl, just moments ago with head coach Kirby Smart. Coach, the last time you faced a top 25 team was over a month ago. How have you prepared your guys for your toughest challenge yet? Well, we prepare each and every week the same. We go out, hit people in the mouth all week. It's what we do. It's how we practice, regardless of the opponent. You've seen teams get after Joe Burrow a little bit. How do you adjust your defense to knock him off his mark? Man, you got to affect the quarterback in every game. I don't think that changes based on who it is. We got to do a good job trying to affect him today. Coach, thank you. Thank you. Kirby, of course, was a player for Georgia in games here. He was an assistant coach under Nick Saban here. And the two quarterbacks getting set. 31st meeting all time that dates back to 1928. We finally have a game under 90. <laughs> 83 right now. It's a beautiful day in Baton Rouge. 
I think you can always add 10 degrees just for the intensity <laughs> in, the, in the crowd. If you go back 32 years in the last 14 meetings, virtually dead even. Georgia won the toss and deferred. So Rodrigo Blankenship will tee it up. Todd Edwards Elair and Nick Rosett wait back at the goal line for LSU. Fifth time out of 48 kicks by Rodrigo Blankenship. A touchback. And out come the Tigers to the 25. And that brings us to the Chick-fil-A starting lineup. Starting with Joe Burrow, who had taken care of the ball so well up until a week ago. His first interception was a pick six and then one at the very end of the 27-19 loss to Florida. Here's the rest of the lineup for him. Justin Jefferson has been his number one receiver so far this year. On the ground, pickup of a couple for Nick Rosette. Georgia defensively, as I mentioned, only giving up 13 points a game. That's the group. DeAndre Walker, their best pass rusher. Georgia only has six sacks. That's 116th in the country. And they know they have to at least affect Burrow in the pocket today, if not get to him. Empty backfield for Burrow on second down and eight. The quick throw is complete. Jamar Chase chased out of bounds by Richard LeCount. Interesting matchup. If you just look at the rushing attack for LSU against the rush defense for Georgia, Georgia not doing well. Eighth in the league in yards per rush of attempt. That is not like Georgia in pass. But LSU is 11th in yards per attempt running the ball. It's a matchup that could go either way, probably the key to the game. They haven't done that well on third down this year, especially last week in the loss to Florida. LSU was four out of 17. Here comes a blitz on third and six. Burrow flushed, and down he goes, and there's the sack, and it's DeAndre Walker right on cue. Boy, that's one thing you don't want your quarterback to do early in a football game, especially against a team that is struggling to sack the quarterback. He knew it right out that it was going to be a blitz. Now the clock has to go. I got to get rid of it. I don't want my offensive lineman eating the sack early in this game. Walker, the guy we highlighted, that's his fifth sack of the year. And a punting situation by Rosenberg's kick. Miko Hardman backpedals and has to call a late fair catch around the 29-yard line. So a quick three and out. And we check the Chick-fil-A starting lineups for Georgia. And it all starts with number 11. Sophomore Jake Fromm, who right now is completing 73% of his passes. And that's going to shatter the school record of Hudson Mason back in 2014 if he keeps that pace. Really even numbers, 1,200 yards, 12 touchdowns, two picks. <laughs> And the rest of the Georgia offense, they've had trouble with their offensive line. And kind of iffy on Solomon Kinley, had an MCL from a week ago. We expect that he's going to be out there, and he is. But they've had some injury problems, including Ben Cleveland, who's out with a broken leg. Elijah Holyfield is the single setback. Charlie Warner, the tight end in motion, and the gives to Elijah. And got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Ran into Ed Alexander. Defensively for LSU, they're strong at just about all phases. Defensive line, linebacker, secondary, you name it. They've got some good ones. And this guy, Rashad Lawrence, one of Gary's favorite, because he does the dirty work. He does. He does it when he's hurt or whatever he has to do. They're not as deep as George in the defensive line, but they're pretty darn skilled. Second down and 10, that's Hardman in motion. Here comes a blitz from Devin White from down the middle and complete. And it's Isaac Nauta, the tight end, for a first down. 
for the reason. And the reason you can throw this ball down the middle is your center picks up the blitz. Gilliard takes on number 40 and stones him. Pick up of 19. From over the middle again. This one's in out of the hands of Nada. Well, Georgia has thrown two passes, and Devin White, number 40, their outstanding All-American linebacker, has blitzed both times. One time he got picked up, this time he had a run at the quarterback, and as Ness told you, dropped pass. And he should have had it. Brings up second down and 10. There's number 40, Devin White. DeAndre Swift in the Georgia backfield from fakes it to him. Has to throw sidearm and dropped by Swift out in the flat. It'll be third down and 10. The chess game going on again from Georgia's offense to Dave Aranda and his defense is when do you go man to man against this team? They know Georgia loves the deep play action pass. They burned Vandy last week with it to take the lead when they trailed for the first time all year 7-3. That's the chess game that LSU has to have. When do you keep that free safety deep? Georgia's been good on third down this year, but they'll have to earn this one. Third and 10 from deep sideline streak. And oh, just over the hands of Nicole Hartman. It would have been a touchdown had he pulled it in. You know, we saw that in the Tennessee game. Remember, Fromm missed a few deep throws. Yep. That he had chances to get early touchdowns. Miko Hardman is hard to overthrow, but this time he did. Obviously, if you put that on him, that's a touchdown. Yeah, he's still running. Absolutely. If that's a yard shorter, brings up a punting situation. Freshman Jake Camardo will kick it away. And back on the other end is Jonathan Giles around the 10 yard line for LSU. No, not really. Out of bounds. It'll be inside the 20, I think, but Maybe. not by much. I don't think so. It's going to be. are going to stop right at the 19 and a half. <laughs> We're both right. <laughs> <laughs> No score here early as we check in with Jamie. Well, this is one of the best atmospheres in college football. This is my first time around the SEC, so I am learning about LSU, but how about the way that Georgia fans travel? We saw it last year when they went to South Bend to that Notre Dame game. It was a sea of red. You could barely tell you were in Indiana. Now you come to this game today. LSU told us 6,000 tickets were allotted for Georgia fans. They sold those out immediately. Now that secondary market is where it's at. You're seeing a lot of pockets of red. By the way, New Orleans not too far away. They had a parade on Bourbon Street this morning, guys. I got a text from Archie Manning this morning. He said, Ness, the whole city's red and black. <laughs> Play action for Burrow on first down. Has time running out of it. And the late throw. Nobody home over there except Tyson Campbell. He's very fortunate he threw a knuckleball that time because if it would have been stroked as good as he could have, it would have been intercepted. Part of, if you look, play action pass, part of the game plan, could they get deep, could they get a crossing route? Nothing. Handled very well by this Georgia secondary on a play action first down pass. And Burrow hit the deck after letting that one fly. Jotre Kirkland, who expected to see some action today, is in the lineup. They throw it out to him. Trying to make something happen out to the 25-yard line. Monty Rice made the tackle there. Kirkland was a quarterback in high school, put up ridiculous numbers to win a state championship for his team in Letcher, Louisiana. Didn't we all in high school? <laughs> <laughs> we lost like five games in overtime, so don't look at me. <laughs> Here we go. Remember, last time in third down, he kind of fed the Sharks with a sack. That's got to be demoralizing for the offensive line. Can he get throw it with timing, Joe Burrow? Georgia creeping up there like they might blitz. Delayed blitz, Burrow throws complete, and first down. Great effort. Terrence Marshall, as Gary said, second effort, got the last two yards he needed. This is what I'm talking about. You gotta help the quarterback. First of all, the call, a three-step drop. That helps everybody, and then the effort to make the first down. Now it's a run blitz, and that doesn't pay off because Brosette just rambles out for 11 more for the Tigers. 
Great block that time by Adrian McGee, number 73, taking on the blitzing linebacker. 73, watch him take on, gets Patrick, number six, in the hole, and they run right behind him. And now it's play action and deep ball for Burrow. What a catch by Marshall again. Freshman on freshman, he beat Tyson Campbell. Early in the game last week, he had one just like that, and Jefferson dropped it. This time, they make him pay. Back to Brosset and another four or five yard pickup. In the pregame show today, Jamie talking with Coach Argeron, and he, she said, What do you have to do to protect your quarterback? He said, More play action on first down and the long ball. And, and, and catch the ball, basically. Right? Yeah, right. Last week, it was nothing big, it was a bunch of little things that beat LSU. Burrow. To the end zone, jump ball, knocked down. Yeah, there's that guy again. The Andre Baker, the guy <laughs> Gary talked about in the open. Yeah, if you're, you're going at him, you better rerun a great route with a perfect throw. Now, every, anybody's being capable of being beaten, but if you better do it at a high level because Baker has seen it all. He's been in this league. He's took the battles. He's gotten beat a few times, and he comes back ready to play. The completion percentage against him is like 34% for opposing quarterbacks. So they don't pick on that side very often. Big third down and five here in the red zone for LSU. Burrow throws late across the middle, incomplete. And he was getting some heat. The closest guy was Clyde Edwards Elair, but Robert Beal, I think, with the late pressure, got to Burrow. Watch Jawan Taylor, inside linebacker, take away the play. They're going to try to run the back into the middle. He walls them off. Not going to get there. Nobody to throw to. Tremendous play inside linebacker. That's your job. Do not get beat inside. Force the throw to the outside. He did his job. Cole Tracy has been almost perfect this year. We saw him with the game winner at Auburn. This will be a 33 yard field goal attempt, and it's up and good. So the Tigers got a long pass down to the 20 yard line. Georgia's defense stiffened, and the Tigers have to settle for three. Watch your sports news and highlights straight without the noise. Stream CBS Sports HQ, the all-new 24-7 Sports News Network, available on your phone, computer, and connected TV devices. CBS Sports HQ, sports for true fans, and every week Gary is on there following our game. We'll check that out later on today. A 65-yard drive and nine plays for LSU. Capped it off with the field goal by Cole Tracy. Best news for LSU is the receiver making two big plays. Yep. One on third down, and then the big catch. Great throw, obviously, but when your receivers are making the plays, that's contagious. Avery Atkins tees it up for LSU. That's Miko Hardman back deep. They'll try to keep it out of his hands as a kick returner or a punt returner today because, as Gary mentioned, a game breaker. He gets his hands on it, and he won't even look at this one. So Georgia will start from the 25. Georgia off to a 6 and 0 start. And this is only this is the first time in school history back to back 6 and 0 starts. And when they start 6 and 0, good things happen like SEC championships or in the case of 1980, national championship. So we'll wait and see about 2018. Well, they have a good enough team. There's no doubt to play with anybody in the country. And I don't think they have to do anything fancy. Either. Everybody say they want to show what they got. A win is enough here today. Hardman in motion. Elijah Holyfield, big opening off the right side. And Holyfield with a stiff arm down the sideline. Big gainer for number 13 before he's run out of bounds. But there's a flag down. James Carter's our referee. Holding. Offense number 79. Two yard penalty. First down. Isaiah Wilson, the right tackle, negates a 28 yard pickup. There he is, number 79. You can see his hand outside the jersey. When he distorts the jersey, he's going to get called. A called on that play. Cade Mays 
block Devin White again, number 40. Great block. White has been blitzing a lot, and so far, he's only gotten free one time. Let's see if Dave Aranda adjusts, because you can't take your best defensive player out of the play. Georgia backed up to its own 15-yard line now. DeAndre Swift, and he found an opening. Great move there to plant his foot and get out back across the 25 near the 27. Well, remember the first drive. Georgia started running on the first play of the game. Then they threw four consecutive passes. You could see they went back to the bench, and Jim Chaney says, we're going to find out if we can run the ball. And they did successfully that time with Swift. It was expected to be the star in the backfield for Georgia this year, but quite frankly, it's been Holyfield that's been the better of the two. Swift has been a little bit injured here and there. He's healthy now and showed it on that run. Trips to the top of the screen, but it's a draw play to Swift right up the middle. DeAndre Swift broke a tackle at the 35 and all the way out to the 45-yard line. Boy, he is special. He had problems with his groin at the beginning of the year. He just didn't seem to have that explosiveness that he had before. But that time, Charlie Warner, number 89, again got on number 40. That seems to be circled in the Georgia game plan is make sure we get a hat on their best player, Devin White. So Swift's last two carries for 12 and then 18, and now it's back to Holyfield, up the middle, and Elijah, whoa, runs over John Battle. He won that battle. The champ is here. He runs angry. He does. Again, watch the linebacker get taken out of the play, Devin White. Beautiful job by the offensive line. Actually, both inside linebackers blocked. You can run the ball pretty effectively when your offensive line handles both of the inside linebackers. Remember when Herschel ran over Bill Battle? Yes. I, or Bill Bates? Well, I know Bill was, Bates remembers yeah, it. Yeah, Bill Bates remembers it. And John Battle, I don't think we'll forget <laughs> that one too soon. Holyfield again, this time spinning in the hole. Got about two. <laughs> Here's what we were talking about. Herschel as a freshman, Bill Bates, oh, that hurt. And it hurts every time he sees it, I, I realize I, that. I, I always feel bad for him because I threw a famous interception to LT. Uh-huh. Every Thanksgiving. Every, yeah, every Thanksgiving. When you get po posterized <laughs> like that by a great player, you always have to see it forever right. and ever. Holyfield out, Swift back in. Second down and eight, Georgia at the LSU 36. All three receivers to Franz right. They're going to go right back to the draw play. If it ain't. Stopped, keep doing it. Absolutely. Listen, we were at the game. Georgia watched the game. Florida ran for over 200 yards against this defense. You can see they came back to the bench. Jim Cheney, offensive coordinator, says, uh, we're going to test whether they can stop the run in one week. They have been very effective. He got that close to the first down and Ed Alexander is the guy that's shaken up on the field. And they've been running the ball between the tackles, and to do that, you have to have a center that blocks. And Coach Ogeron has said, Georgia's center's the best he's seen. Isn't that something? Some, oh. Lamont Gilliard, that's high praise. We'll check on Ed Alexander when we come back. Adam Zucker in New York with this Ford update. Nebraska was trying to avoid its first 0-6 start ever. Blew a 28-14 lead at Northwestern and in overtime, Drew Luckenball with the field goal for the Wildcats. 0-6, never before until today for the Huskers. Back to you guys. Man, that is tough. Thanks, Zuck. Third down and one here. Georgia's just been running it up the middle. Yeah. Brad, I think when you have a great player like Devin White, as fast as he is, sometimes the best game plan is to run right at him. Yeah. Take his speed away and see if he can play in the box. That seems to be an emerging game plan by Georgia. The only kind of deception, if there is any, is from dropping back and then the quick draw. But other than that, they've just been running it right up the gut. Yeah, he's going to force LSU to put an extra guy in the box, which opens up the play action pass game. Holyfield behind Fromm is going to do it himself on a quarterback sneak, and he's got the first down at the 27 yard line. Modern defenses love to keep two safeties back and then sneak in a safety near the snap. 
it's called like a seven and a half box. Right. You don't, you know, you don't want to just line up and let the quarterback know. You want to keep him guessing. Well, if you get run on like this, you're just going to have to load the box. You can't lose by people just running the ball. Seventh play of the drive coming up, all rushing plays. Do you take a shot here? Right, two deep safeties. I think they'll run. And they will. Holyfield trying to get to the edge. Does another good gain and another collision back there with John Battle. Battle's going to have nightmares about number 13 right now. And he's hard to knock down like his dad. That's right. <laughs> two deep safeties right there. You can see him standing on about the 15 yard line. Jake Fromm looks at it and says, let's go with the running play. Most of those handoffs from shotgun have a pass attached to it and you just keep it. White again. He has been circled and they are going after him. Let's see if it's going to be an eighth straight run. It will be and it's a first down run again by DeAndre Swift as he's got it inside the 15. Just want to go back to Coach Ogeron talking about Lamont Gilliard, the center for Georgia. I mean, Coach O has been coaching defensive linemen and defense for 30 years and he singled him out as the best center he's seen on tape in 30 years of football. Senior out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Came to Georgia as a defensive player and moved to the offensive line. Good move for him and Georgia. From in the gun, Swift is there with him. Here comes another run. This one is going nowhere though. Nice job that time by Glenn Logan to make first contact on DeAndre Swift. So here we go. Now we look at the matchup with the receivers against the man-to-man -man coverage in that LSU secondary. If DeAndre Baker is the best corner in college football, Greedy Williams is right there with them. Right. Number 29. Matched up against Riley Ridley down at the bottom of the screen. Ridley's there. Nicole Hardman's in the slot there. And Terry Godwin is up top on second down and nine. From play action. Plenty of time. Scans the field. Goes to the end zone and overshot. Nicole Hardman incomplete. Well, write this down for later because on that play, Terry Godwin came out open, wide open on the play. Watch the top of the screen. Okay, runs a route, kind of a stutter, and into the inside. Look how open he is on the play. That will be noticed, marked, and remembered. From looked that way to start and then came back to the near side, and now it's third down and nine. Georgia can get a first down just inside the five yard line. Nada, the tight end in a slot on the right. From loads, fires in and out of the hands of Miko Hardman, and again it was Kerry Vincent on the coverage. So both defenses answer the bell. You move the ball between the 20, 20s, but you got to make the perfect throw near the goal line. And that was not a perfect throw. It had to be low away from the defender, and it was too high to handle. Big Fromm was looking for a flag, and none showed. And that means Rodrigo Blankenship in to attempt a 31-yard field goal. 9 of 11, as you see on the season. From the left hash to try to tie the game, and it's a fake, and it's Blankenship trying to carry it. Down he goes. Devin White. Well, Kirby tried to play a Les Miles play. <laughs> The fake field goal, all for naught. LSU takes over with a big defensive stop. Tomorrow, CBS Super Bowl season continues. Doubleheader day, big battle between the Steelers and Cincinnati. And then Jacksonville heads to Dallas to take on the Cowboys. The day kicks off. The NFL today, J.B., Nate, Boomer, Phil, Coach Cower, powered by Ram Trucks.
NFL today, noon Eastern, tomorrow. Here, Georgia went 59 yards in 12 plays and didn't get any points out of it. Fake yeah, field goal went awry. I think Kirby had the exact look he wanted, but a great head to, uh, individual heads up play by LSU. So the Tigers work from their own 16. Edwards Elair behind Burrow will get the call in Georgia all over that play. Let me show you things you can't teach as a coach. Some guys just got it. Here's Greedy Williams right here, and there's Grant Delpit. That's the look they want. Two aggressive players coming off the edge. But Delpit smells it right away, looks back, and gets outside, and then forces the player inside. You know that... There's the reaction outside. I don't know if those guys sold their tickets to the Georgia fans, but they're having fun anyway. So they made money in watching the game. <laughs> Burrow down the middle, complete to the tight end Moore, and he's got a first down. Foster Morrow with a big first down catch. Again, Kirby had the look he wanted. He thought they'd come off the corner. Wasn't happening. Joe Burrow, 5 of 8 for 62 yards. Edward Elair. Taken down from behind as he crossed the 30 yard line. And it was Julian Rochester, the nose tackle. Georgia this season with the turnover story and the points allowed off them zero. Yeah, and remember coming into this game, they had only trailed for one play. 15 seconds all, all year. year. <laughs> yes. Vandy kicked a field goal on the first play. Godwin catches a pass for a touchdown. Well, they've been behind for a few minutes now. They're going to hand it off to Kirkland. On a little jet sweep. Georgia saw that coming, and Tay Crowder has a couple of tackles so far in this series. Yeah, and Walter Grant, number 84, did a good job. His job again is set the edge, turn the play in, watch him come upfield know where his help is and force it back inside of the linebacker. Got about a yard and that's it. There's the time this season. 15 seconds coming in and almost eight minutes now. Third down and four. That's Jefferson in motion. Burrow throws out to him complete for a first down. That's his favorite target this year. That's catch number 22 for Justin Jefferson this year. That's just pitch and catch. It easy really stuff. was. You know, I've been asked all week, what do you do if you're a Joe Burrow and you throw the big pick? You know, how do you come back? And I talked to Drew, we did yesterday about it. You just go back to work. There's nothing else to do. You study your game plan, you get ready to play again. He's going to keep it. Had an option to pitch it, kept it. He's a tough runner, a good runner. Had a good game there. Well, when we talked to Steve Emzinger about what, how he wanted to attack Georgia, he said we have to find ways to stretch this defense out horizontal. We have to be able to run the ball wide. How do they do it? Georgia blitzes here. Burrow fires far side. Another nice pitch and catch. Jamar Chase. That's his third grab of the day already yeah. for the freshman out of Metairie, Louisiana. I think DeAndre Baker down here on the bottom is going to go, will they ever throw another one my way? <laughs> they threw one that way and he knocked it down. Exactly. And what that does is it allows the defense, Mel Tucker's defense on Georgia, to slant and roll your coverage away from him. Edwards Elair, first down, and he busts into the secondary. Edwards Elair in a foot race. Inside the 10-yard line. J.R. Reed saved a touchdown. What a way for the quarter to come to a close. LSU with a lead, and they'll have a first and goal to start the second quarter. We'll return to Baton Rouge after this message in a word from your local station. We switch ends of the field to start the second quarter. LSU threatening after that 46-yard run, 47-yard run. Got him first and goal at the Georgia 7. Behind Rosette. 
He will get the carry, trying to cut it outside. He's dropped for a loss by Natrez Patrick. Let's go back to the play that got him close, Gary. Third and short is when you're susceptible. The safety comes up too fast. There's no safety in the middle of the field at all. Once you pierce the defense, a missed tackle, there's nobody there. Here's a pitch on an overload to the right. And heading to the two-yard line is Brosette. So now it's third and goal. On this would be a humongous stop for it Georgia. Would be. They already have had one. And could they get another? From the Chick-fil-A pylon cam, as you see Brosset coming right at you. They mark it just inside the four, where it's third and goal. So now we've talked about how do you get run the ball against Georgia? Do you have to involve your quarterback in this play? Burrow under center. Jefferson in motion. It's just Brosette off left tackle, and he takes everybody in with him. Or did he? They say no. I thought the I push thought was got across. Apparently it's fourth and goal. I don't think Coach Orgeron agrees. Oh, I would take a timeout here. They he's, all, to... he's all the way down to the two-yard line taking the timeout. Uh, Joe Burrow wanted to run the sneak right there, but the reason Coach O called the timeout is he wanted to get a replay right. of it. Here's from the goal line. That's a better look. Well, maybe not. Well, I saw his helmet go across. I cannot see the football, so you can't change the play yet. There you see number four who's carrying it, and right there you would think if Boy, the ball is where I, I it should you, be, it I, should be a touchdown. But, but can you see the ball? That's you just true. can't make up the play here. The LSU head coach is challenging the spot and the ruling on the field. The previous play is under review. So it goes upstairs to George Radiger. Brissett spins, and you would think he has the ball in the middle of his chest. You would assume. You would assume. But you can't see it. And that's the replay official's job right here. He has to confirm it. This time you follow Brosette. You see Georgia stand him up. Now you might think that you could pace together a sky cam look <laughs> at it from above and this look to determine where it is. But so far I can't do it. You can't cut and paste. <laughs> so we'll let them sort it out. I think this is the clearest look I and the best too. look. Yep. Boy, I tell you that. You know what? If they did call it a touchdown right here, I think the replay official would go home and say, I got that right. I got that one. <laughs> I got that one, hon. <laughs> <laughs> so right now they have it spotted at about the eight inch line. The original intent of replay, in my opinion, was to reverse obvious calls. Nothing is obvious about returning, re reversing this call to me. And if it is not a touchdown, it's fourth down in virtually inches. Yeah. We're hearing from the truck that it's going to stay the way it is. James Carter will make it official for us. Here's a call. The ruling on the field stands. The runner was short of the goal line. LSU will not be charged for timeout and will still have one challenge remaining. So back comes the offense. Georgia's defense still huddled around Kirby Smart over on the far sideline. One of the biggest contingents of Georgia fans is right over there in the corner of that end zone. Yeah. So they'll be screaming for their defense. Meanwhile, LSU is inches away from the dog's goal line. Remember, Joe Burrow is 6'4 and about 218 pounds. And it's his call, and he's in. Touchdown, LSU. Unless the ball was out. The ball came loose, but probably after he crossed the line. Joe Burrow with a touchdown on fourth and inches. And for him, his third rushing touchdown of the year.
He likes to run the ball. He says, I'm never going to slide. If anything, I'll run out of bounds. So just putting his head down and going straight ahead is you know, fine. And him. I also think if he would have tried the Drew Brees jump over, he would have got stopped because Georgia was guessing that he was going to try to dive over the line. I don't think he'd have made it. Cole Tracy will come in for the point after. So a lot of people have wondered this year, what if Georgia gets behind? How do they play then? They're off sides on the extra point. It's up and good as DeAndre Baker jumped off by about three yards. I don't think you could decline it. I think they called the play dead before the ball was kicked. Oh, I thought they blew the whistle dead. I think the headlinesman is saying, no, I killed the play. Prior to the snap, outside, defense number 18 will replay the try. So they have to replay the kick. Tracy for the point after to try to make it 10-0 LSU. Up and good. Going back to my point, everybody said, what if Georgia gets behind in a hostile environment? They're behind in a hostile environment. Joe Burrow and LSU up 10-0 here in Baton Rouge. I'd like to remind you, please help those affected by natural disasters like Hurricane Michael. Visit redcross.org for more information. LSU, a 10-point lead. Joe Burrow with a less than one-yard touchdown dive to give them that 10-point lead. And the Tiger fans enjoying what they're seeing so far. Georgia only allows 13 points a game, and they've allowed 10 already. It's Miko Hardman, who'd like to get his hands on the kickoff of Avery Atkins. And they'll bring it out to the 25 yard line as we welcome you back to the booth. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Jamie's down on the field. Everybody said, what if Georgia gets behind? Here they are behind. They've been behind almost the whole game after 15 seconds all year. <laughs> Better stop sleepwalking. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Georgia ran the ball on the last time drive six times for more than five yards. They got down there, then they threw it. The difference to this game right now, Jake Fromm started out with a completion. He's one for six, five straight incom six straight incompletions by Fromm. The only completion was to his tight end, Isaac Nauta, an 18-yard pickup, so he's going to have to pick it up. Fakes it to Brian Herrien. Going to go deep on first down and overshot his intended receiver, Jeremiah Holloman. Let's just go back to that last drive by Georgia when they got down there before the fake field goal. They had runs, remember, with Holyfield. They had runs of 12, 18, 17, 7, 8, and 5 yards. And they come down here on first down and throw the ball again. Herrien stays in there. Basically, Georgia's third tailback. Here comes a blitz from getting heat. A wobbler had it tipped in the air. Harry and caught it, but very little gain. Devin White was the guy with the pressure on from. And I think Braden Fajoko, number 91, it was the defensive lineman that got in there and got the hit. No, it was Devin White, wasn't it? It was 40. Wow. So they've been signaling him out all day, but you can see Aranda, he continues to blitz him from his linebacker position. The last thing Georgia wants after giving up a touchdown is a three and out on their next series. They've got to get nine here. From fires incomplete, and it is a three and out. Greedy and, Williams in the coverage. And LSU that loves to play man drops and plays deep zone coverage that time. Middle of the field is covered by the Robber in the middle, nowhere to throw the ball. 
get it to the outside. If he'd have thrown it correctly, it would have been intercepted. He had to throw it away. So Jake Camarda into punt. Wow, three straight incompletions after that drive from LSU. Now Georgia fans are going to be saying, what about Justin Fields? Oh, yeah. <laughs> when you play two, you get asked about two. Yep. Jonathan Giles, fair catches, and goes down to his knees to ensure that catch at the 30-yard line. With 12.40 remaining in the second quarter. It's been all Tigers so far. A 10-point lead on the number two team in the country. A little game going on outside Tiger Stadium. A really big game going on inside Tiger Stadium. Our aerial coverage sponsored by State Farm here to help life go right. Sometimes when you're an avid cyclist in New York, a lot of things don't go right. And with that, we bring you Craig Silver, our Emmy winning producer and longtime producer at CBS, who's in a New York hospital recovering from surgery yesterday. Uh, we have all chipped in to buy Craig a stationary, stationary bicycle. bicycle. Yes, <laughs> um, so Craig was surgery yesterday. Buddy, we miss you. Uh, get well soon. And I know you're watching. And we'll try to carry on without you. Joe Burrow to throw on deep middle. Jefferson wide open. Justin Jefferson inside the 20, still fighting for yards. LSU's offense on fire right now. Well, when you get find a receiver, goes in motion, nobody follows him. And then Georgia messes up. Hand signals did not work. They were signaling to each other, and both of them thought the other guy had him. You got him, I'll take him. Now LSU goes hurry up with Brosette, who got a couple. That was a 60-yard gain, excuse me, a 50-yard gain to the 20. Boy, that is a, the worst breakdown if you're a, a coach or a fan of Georgia. They put one guy in motion. It's like motion 101, and you completely bust it. LSU back in the red zone again with a 10 point lead and threatening here. I really think this is the first pressure drive for the floor, excuse me, the Georgia defense all season. Burrow in the gun, the quick toss is bobbled. Incomplete Derek Dillon, the intended receiver, and J.R. Reed was right there trying to come up with a carom for an interception, but it's going to be third and seven. Well, it was a good decision because off the edge, Georgia decided to bring an extra player and pressure, and you throw it out there, you got one on one. And there is no comparison in the quarterback department so far today. And so far in this game, after finishing against Florida one for nine in the second half on third down, LSU has started out three for six. And they've got another one here, third down and seven. Here comes Walker. Got to Burrow, and Burrow had to just get rid of it. Well, he had a screen pass on, so he was willing to retreat and wait. But the back never got freed up. Brissett was running the screen. He's going, please, please, get out there. And just about a half yard short, that would have been a walk-in. You know, against the blitz, if you are able to get the ball to the guy, it, it goes to the to the house. So DeAndre Walker, who had a sack earlier with the pressure that blew that play up, and it forces a Cole Tracy field goal attempt. This one will be from about 36 yards once they spot it down. Kick is perfect. So tack on three more. 13 point lead for LSU with 11.22 to go to half. to nothing LSU 53 yard drive and 50 of that was on one pass play here. Yeah you put a guy in motion you got a true freshman and a senior on the play right there two guys and watch the miscommunication. They both point and they go what? J.R. Reed says you had him. I told you you had him and you get a little talking to. That's Tyson Campbell. 
And Kirby Smart probably telling JR, you got to get him in the right spot. He told us yesterday, Coach Smart, they're going to try to pick on the freshman, and they did there for a big gainer that got them another field goal. Well, the disappointing part if you're Georgia wasn't that fancy. No. You know, I mean, that's uh, that's not even close to being a trick play. That's like uh, first day put in the game plan play. Hey. Atkins had to re tee it. These two kickers today just aren't going to allow anything. Touchback again. Georgia out to the 25. Let's test your knowledge with today's Aflac trivia question. It is. Georgia and LFU has faced off in three SEC championship games. Who were the three MVPs? Okay, that's just plain hard. Think it over. <laughs> Yeah, I thought that was mean. That, that question yeah, was mean. Really? <laughs> Jake Fromm stays in at quarterback on a two out of nine days so far. They'll try the running game again. That's what they had working earlier. Andre Swift maybe got three. Ed Alexander, who was shaken up earlier, back in there in the middle of that defensive front for LSU. Well, as you read, D, I was interviewed a week or so ago saying about Georgia that I believed to run the ball well against the elite defenses in the SEC, they were going to have to use Justin Fields. They've run the ball fine in this game. It's not been the running game. Swift got two more, maybe. <laughs> And right now, the Tigers' defense is hungry, and they're pushing everybody around. It, it's been a little play selection, if you ask me. You know, I mean, the last series, you throw three straight passes. The one was actually caught. I thought it was incomplete when it hit his arm for a yard. But now you get another third and five, and you got everybody growing here. You got the whole crowd. Punt, fumble, punt. The last three times they have had the ball. And the crowd getting into it here on another third down and four for Georgia. From fires deep on the sideline over here. Terry Godwin looking for a flag. There is no flag. I think Jake Fromm was confused again. Dave Aranda, who's known as a man-to-man -man coach, defensive coordinator. They went deep zone again, and Georgia had nothing, no answer for it. Fromm started on the right side of the field, went to the left. And the receiver and the quarterback were not on the same page. So another punt. For Camardo. Jake Fromm now 0 for 4 on third down. Giles, fair catch taken around the 29 yard line. LSU's got it back with just under 10 minutes to go in the half. All Tigers so far here on their home field. Adam Zucker in New York coming up on the Geico Halftime Report. Rick BJ and I get you caught up on today's action, including the Gators' largest road comeback ever. They were down 21 to 3. They win by 10 at Vandy to move to 6 and 1 on the year. Now back to LSU and Georgia. All right, Adam, 13 0 here. LSU putting a surprise on the number two team in the country. Tomorrow, President Donald Trump sits down with 60 minutes for an important conversation about accomplishments and controversy. Tomorrow, only on 60 minutes. Let's check in with Jamie. Well, guys, Joe Burrow, we met with him yesterday, and having this be our first home game with them, it was amazing to be in his presence and to see his serious demeanor. He said he enjoyed his time at Ohio State as a student, but when he came to LSU, he wanted to treat it as a post-graduate internship, and his teammates would agree this guy is all business when he runs this offense. Here he is running the offense on first down, rolling to throw and oh. rolling. And let's see, was it complete? No, I don't think so. No, he, had, out. he had Stephon Sullivan right in front of him, and he decided to go to the second level and throw it to Derek Dillon. Again, a first down throw. There has been success on this, but you got number 10 staring you at a completion on the right side, and he decides to go to the second one. He's lucky he didn't get it picked off. Second and 10. 
Edward Zelair looking for room. Georgia's going to stretch it out and drop him at the line of scrimmage, if not a loss. And Richard LeCount and DeAndre Baker are there to meet him. Well, right now, this Georgia defense looks at third and long. Now, remember, LSU has been dropping zone in third and long. They forced to stop here with good rush defense, and now they need a third down stop. They got one on the last series, but it still ended up being a field goal when they got pressure. DeAndre Walker on Burrow. Here it's third down and nine. And you always wonder about number 15. He's right down on the left side of the Georgia defensive front, and they're going to call timeout. Yeah, Kirby I Smart think, didn't like the looks I, I or think something. Kirby Smart said that we're confused again. First charge time out of the half, Georgia. So he'll talk it over with his D with 9.04 remaining first half. Coming up in about nine minutes of time here, the Geico Halftime Report. So Rick and BJ will have all scores and highlights from earlier action, especially those games they talked about around the SEC. You want to see a good timeout? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven defenders into the short side of the field. Good timeout. Georgia edging up there as though they may blitz on third down and nine. They back out of it. Burrow rolling away from the pressure. He's going to keep it all the way here. Can he get there? I don't think so. Into his own bench, about a half yard shy, I think. Yeah, J.R. Reed, number 20, had the angle on him coming up. He was looking at the down marker. He was trying to get to the edge and uh, running for it. Reed right here is going to be the guy that comes out from the secondary and runs him down. Now, does he get across the line? I, gonna, thought, I thought he was short. The ball was way short. They're going to go for it, Gary. Yep. Or try to draw him off sides. You cannot give Georgia the ball right here. That's for sure. Kirby is going a little bit crazy on the sideline. Yep. I, I thought it was like a yard and a half short. Burrow, I don't know. They stand him up. He might not have gotten this. I don't think so. He'd have to get a favorable spot to get there. First of all, they got a favorable spot to begin with before they went for it on fourth down. Well, if they put it there, it's yes, a first down. It is. Woo, that is wrong. You got a 13 nothing lead here. And if you give Georgia the ball back right there, it tightens the game up fast. No doubt. They're going to bring the chain gang out, I think, to look at this just to make sure. And I don't think Kirby Smart liked the spot either. He's down there talking to the chain gang. I should say the official that coming out with the chain gang. Well, they'll be watch the play before on the spot when he goes out of bounds. He's I think he's about a yard short. First down. Well, they'll replay that one a million times for sure, but LSU keeps the ball. Gutsy move on fourth and inches. One more look at the third down play. Look where the ball is when he goes out of bound. I thought it was a yard and a half short. I'm surprised replay didn't stop it and do the mark. Too late now. So it's first down LSU with the clock winding its way down to the eight and a half minute mark. LSU more than twice the yardage of Georgia so far in this half. Now I wonder if Kirby's going to want a replay on this last quarterback sneak a review. We'll find out when we come back to Baton Rouge. Now Kirby Smart wanted a timeout, I guess, to see the spot on the quarterback sneak. Right. I, I think he would give up two timeouts to go back two plays. Is that legal? <laughs> no. <laughs> you mean on the other run? Right, yeah. on the third down. He says, if I give up two timeouts, can I go to third down? Because <laughs> he'd have won that one. I, I, um, he wants to buy a vowel right now. Yes, he much. does. Might start out with a dirty letter, too. <laughs> First down. At the 39, Edward Zelair and Georgia stands him up for no gain. Tyler Clark and Michael Barnett, the first two to meet him. 
So we're at the eight minute mark. LSU with a 13 to nothing lead. Uh, nope. A quarterback sneak touchdown and two field goals. On the slant. Nice throw and catch. And finally, DeAndre Baker says, they came my way. Stephon Sullivan made the grab. Well, and that's their big slant guy. Stephon Sullivan is 6'6", 6'7", you know, 230 pounds. And this is the play they use him for. Wall off and throw the slant. Another third down for LSU. They come back the other way to Dillon, and he's got a first down. Reed trying to rip the ball out of there, makes the tackle, but it's another Tiger first down. Uh, Joe Burrow is in total control. He's throwing the ball before they break. His leadership skills right now, he's running the ball. He took that early sack, but since then, he's played A football. Back in Georgia territory at the 45, play action. Burrow wants a big one, deep, just over Dillon's outstretched arms. Man. They had him. He knew it. Nobody in the center of the field. He sees the free safety squat go the wrong way, and he's got him. Just a yard too long. Took a shot after delivering that pass as well. So a nice mix of run and pass for LSU on this series. Second and ten. At the Georgia 45, Edward Zelaer finally got to the edge. He's been trying that all day. Wow, nice run wow. there. Great stiff arm about seven yards into that run. Foster Morrow, number 18, came around with a good block. And then to finish off the route, run by Elaire. Watch 18. Help, help. Oh, good handoff by Charles that time, 77. Great block. This time he's hit. At the line of scrimmage by Rochester well, the nose tackle. And we're back to fourth down, and LSU owns fourth down. <laughs> Especially fourth and one. They like well, this. Well, they, they had the fake field goal. They've owned it. He's in the shotgun this time, though. Well, it didn't matter. Edward Zelayer into the secondary, and it's inside the 20 for the Tigers again. Well, you know how impressive this is. That's four fourth down wins. Jacob Hester is impressed from the 2007 exactly. game when they had five fourth down that they made against Florida in that game. Burrow, play action, going for all of it in the corner. Incomplete intended for Marshall. Campbell was covered. Boy, the hurry up offense has caught Georgia a little bit out of sorts. There's the two freshmen going at it on that last play. Yep. Tried to do an Odell Beckham and it was not enough room. They've had the ball three and a half minutes, threatening to score again here before halftime. Georgia substituted with five different fresh players. Second and ten. I thought there was a false start, but I guess not. Burrow in trouble. And he's going to go down. Oh, man, and maybe out of field goal range, too. Everything that could go wrong went wrong on that play, and Georgia took advantage of it. I thought the left tackle for LSU jumps. I don't think that's what the flag is, though. Sadiq Charles, look at number 77. Maybe he just got a good head start. Oh, I don't know. That was really close. Holding. Offense number 77. That penalty is declined. Third down. Well, he didn't get the false start, but he did get the hold. You know, it was going to be a screen pass. Jonathan Ledbetter, number 13, defensive end for Georgia, read it, grabbed the receiver, did a great job of reading the play and throwing it up. Watch Ledbetter, number 13, right there, read it, retreat into it, and Burrow had nowhere to go with the ball. You got to throw it right at his feet. You got to give me third and 10, and you got to stay in field goal range on that play. A loss of 12, so it's third and 22. Burrow with a four wide out grouping in the shotgun here. They're going to keep it on the ground with Burrow, and Burrow, he gets some of that back, he back got, into field goal range. Absolutely. Be about a 38 yarder now. Good job by Burrow, keeping it, knowing what he had to do. He made the mistake, and he fixed the mistake. 
You got to love it. After that run, he got up talking to the Georgia defense. And this is a read all the way. You ride it, ride, and then you keep it, get around the end that time, and make the big play. DeAndre Walker, number 15, had a chance, but once Burrow got outside, it was enough to get him back in field goal range. Cole Tracy, two for two already today. This one from 39, just inside the left upright. So Cole Tracy's been dead on most of the season. This one he had to have a little English there at the end, but he adds to the LSU lead. Another 50 yard drive Gary almost five minutes to get a field goal 16 to nothing LSU and they gave him a little bit of everything they stayed balanced they ran the ball they threw the ball five times and again touchback Georgia comes out to the 25 see if they can get something going offensively before halftime now we asked you the athletic trivia question a little bit earlier the three MVPs in the three championship games, who were they? Justin Vincent, DJ Shockley, and Teron Matthew, the Honey Badger. And here's a look at those flashbacks from those three championship games. LSU, a winner 34-13. There's DJ Shock throwing to Bailey for the touchdown in a Georgia win. And then number seven could do it all. Still playing in the NFL. Teron Matthew, Elijah Holyfield, uh, pick up a five, maybe six. Well, you know, Kirby has been grouchy all year to go six and zero. Oh. Now you're losing, and now you know your team's a little in trouble. So now you're being nice. Okay, we're okay. We're okay. Remember, Oklahoma last year, we were down 31-14. We kicked the field goal before the end of the half. We got back in the game. Justin Fields is on the field for Georgia. This was his first snap. And another freshman there joins him in the backfield. James Cook. Brian Harry broke one tackle. Not going to get away from the next one. It'll be a loss of about a half yard on the play. Fromm comes back in. So that didn't work, and now it's third and five. Tell you, Riley Ridley, number eight, is upset. He's looking at the bench. He's shaking his head. He wants the football. He's probably not the only receiver that would like to get one. Here comes a blitz from the secondary. Fromm's in trouble. Got out of it somehow, and then incomplete to DeAndre Swift, who had about 20 yards of grass in front of him. Well, I thought he was going to pull it off, didn't you? Delpit was coming off the edge. He had a chance to, to sack him, number nine. Watch him come from the secondary. Jumps over, grabs him. Fromm gets loose and then shakes into the middle. I thought he had him. And just threw him behind. And boy, if Swift catches this, it's a big play. Yeah, Divinity had a chance. Delpit had a chance. And then with a good throw, Georgia had a chance. Third straight, three and out. LSU's got the ball back with 347 and two timeouts to work with. And that's where they spot it. Great field position again. Coming up Tuesday on CBS from Dick Wolf, executive producer of Law & Order, comes a new drama, FBI, Tuesday after NCIS, only CBS. Well, the FBI should get involved with Georgia to see where their offense yeah, well, is. Well, how about their defense? They've given up 250 yards in the first half. It's been everything. Mistakes, busted assignments. Already given up more rushing yards than they're used to in an entire game. Burrow back to throw for more. Going deep on left sideline, incomplete. Baker got tangled up with Terrace Marshall, no flag. 
Texas. Well, I tell you, LSU not thinking about the clock at all. You wondered right here if they would run the ball, try to take some clock off of it, get into halftime. If Georgia could get a stop here, they could still get the double possession in the first half and then get the ball to start the second half. It's been a couple years if since I, they haven't scored in a half. If I get a stop here really good, I'm thinking about taking a timeout if I'm Kirby. The long stretch play to Brosette, and he's drilled by Richard LeCount after a short gain, and it's going to be third and long. LSU should bleed the clock now, take all of the 33 seconds left on this play call. Joe Burrow well aware of that, taking his time in that huddle. Gets it under 10 on the play clock. Georgia got good pressure that time. Keon Richardson and Tyler Clark. Yeah, but one of the things that Steve Demingzer said to us yesterday about Joe Burrow is he has to learn to know when to take a sack. Yeah. Every once in a while, if it's not there, the you know, a sack is not the worst thing. We gotta punt the ball, we gotta punt the ball. Said the other thing you'd like to teach him is how to slide, but he is still working really on that surprised. one. Really surprised Kirby Smart has not taken a time out here, though. He's going to burn another 40 seconds here. Von Rosenberg actually could have spent some more time before putting that. Nicole Hardman trying to get everybody out of the way. Takes a Georgia bounce and then rolls back in LSU's direction around the 23-yard line. That's where Georgia has two timeouts in a little over two minutes remaining in the half. The Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans brings you today's scholar athletes for Georgia. Andrew Thomas, a finance major. Richard Lawrence, sports administration major. Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans is showing their commitment to the investment of our future by donating $1,000 to Georgia and LSU's general scholarship fund. Those two have run into each other Absolutely. a few times they're, today, they're too. Gonna, they're going to run into each other right now. They're matched up right now. And a bad snap, Fromm has to scrape it up and down he goes at the line of scrimmage. It won't be a sack, but it's still second and nine. And he looks up at that clock that's under two minutes right now and trying to hurry things up for Georgia. Fromm two of 11, remember one of those was a tip ball that went for one yard. The first play of the game he had a pass completion, nothing since. That was actually a two yard loss. It's second down and 12. Empty backfield for Fromm. Looking for a receiver. Finally finds one. And a big hit put on at the 30 on Jeremiah Holloman. One thing about Jake Fromm, he loves to go hurry up. He's been doing this since high school. Uh, right now they need three more yards to keep anything alive here as we approach a minute. Delayed blitz coming from over the middle, DeAndre Swift. Great job by Fromm that time. He wanted to go to the right side and throw the ball to Nada. Nada was covered that time by Michael Divinity, number 45. So he came back and hit the crossing route. A minute to play in the half. From throws Same play. it out to Nada. Same play. Gets out of bounds. Stops the clock. With 57 seconds remaining in the quarter. And again, like that Oklahoma semifinal game for Georgia when they had a late field goal in the first half, I think Georgia's thinking right now if we can get a field goal try, that's a win for us considering the way we played in the first half. And remember, Gary reminded you Georgia gets the ball to start the third quarter. That would be the double if they could get some points and then get the ball to open up the third stanza. But that's a lot of ifs right now. They're still at the 48 yard line. From running out of time again. Logan giving chase. And he's got to throw it away. Again, Dave Aranda rushes only three. He does not have a strong pass rush team. So what does he do? He says, if we don't have a good strong pass rush, let's not rush him. Let's play coverage. And it has worked for him so far in this game. 
Terry Godwin appeared to be open again late in that snap, but Fromm didn't have the time to nah, see him. Yeah, his, his eyes got disjointed on that one. He had nowhere to know where he could throw the ball. Third down and five. Three again. From this throws incomplete and almost picked off by Kelvin Joseph. And Georgia will punt. Boy, that was wild, and that could, you're right, Brad. When I saw that, I didn't think it was catchable, but that was almost an interception. This is the one I'm not sure why you catch if you're LSU. Only bad things can happen. What if you drop this ball? I just let it fall. And he does. looks like what they're going to do. Well, it wasn't good enough to catch. Kicked it out of <laughs> bounds again. Freshman putter struggling at times this year. And as they walk it up, it's going to be at the 20 yard line. And again, he gets a little tap on the helmet, too, as if to say, hang in there. So 38 seconds left. It's always, trust me on this, from many years in the NFL at home, okay? It's hard to take a knee at home at halftime. <laughs> but you get booed a lot, but I think the strategy for LSU is to take a knee. You don't want a mistake here. Your odds are going far enough. Just get to the locker room at 16 nothing. If you'd have given Coach O the option to have a 16-point lead right here, he'd say, yeah, I'll take it any day of the week. And so they will take a knee. And that's going to wind down the first half that has belonged to the 13th ranked team in the country. Coming off a loss on the road, the home cooking, I don't know if it's a gumbo or whatever, but uh, Georgia has not awakened yet, and it's been all Tigers. 16 to nothing. The Tigers go to the locker room with the lead. Still a two possession game if you want to look at it that way for Georgia, but they're going to have to do a lot more offensively and defensively, as Gary said, for that matter in the second half. And I'm sure Kirby is going to tell Jamie that right now. Coach, giving up 250 yards of offense, what is your defense missing on that you're seeing that you could fix? Well, they're doing a good job going hurry up on us, and we've given up some big plays. We took a chance on a third and one. They popped a long run. we got to tackle better, and we're not playing real good sound defense. Is there a reason to use Justin Fields more in the second half to spark your offense? We feel like we can get a spark. We certainly will. All right, Coach, thanks. Thank you. He is right, Ness. Two big plays, a 50-yard pass and a 43-yard pass and a long run. So a surprise happening here in Baton Rouge at halftime 16 and other as we send it to the Geico halftime report. Here's a. All right, Ness, surprise indeed. And coming up on the Geico halftime report, they continue. Rick BJ and I explain whose stock is up and whose is down in the SEC after this word from your local station. from what they've seen in the first half from their 13th ranked Tigers all LSU in the first half 16 to nothing as we come back in Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge to open up the third quarter and Georgia will get the football first to start the third and they will work it from the 25 yard line as we welcome you back Brad and Gary okay is Georgia playing that poorly or is LSU playing lights out? You pick. That's a good question. A little of each. A miscommunication, busted plays, but I do think that LSU has come to play. The receiver started it early in the game. Is, uh, Burrow has been tough. But, you know, I think Jamie's question to Kirby was interesting. Remember, he was on the other side of Tua with the spark right. a year ago. Will he use the spark? I go back to last year's Oklahoma game. Jake Fromm had a great second half, 8 for 12, 101 yards passing when he was behind in that semifinal championship game. They're going to need him to repeat that kind of performance. He's going to run with it on first down here and got leveled after maybe a two-yard game. And he had plenty of time to survey again. 
Take a look at some of the game trends. We talked about Jake coming in completing 73% of his passes. He's already missed on 11. LSU great on fourth down. Including point getters on fourth down. And Georgia has trailed almost 25 minutes in this game after 15 seconds of trailing coming in. From throws out complete to Hartman. And I think he got the first down. Miko Hartman on the catch. Remember, the 30 yard line is just like the goal line since it was a touchback. If he touches that line, it's a first down. No need to measure. And it is first down. As you look into the shadows that are taking half the field here in Baton Rouge. Fromm trying to be heard. He's moving his tight end Charlie Werner from right to left. And that's DeAndre Swift. And Swift, a good run and another first down, a pickup of 12 or 13. You know, we talk about Georgia having a good second half from Fromm in that game. But remember, Sony Michelle carried the ball in the second half, nine for 86, and Nick Chubb, eight for 56. So they did not lose their balance going into the second half of that game. Devin White has got Swift wrapped up after a game. And slap Swift on the helmet. Devin came in as a number two tackler in the SEC with 53 stops. He's always around the football. Wouldn't you like to see them feed Holyfield a little bit? He really started the game out with such great intensity. He's in there right now behind Fromm on second down and eight. They fake it to him. From plenty of time, throws complete. This one to Riley Ridley finally has his first catch of the day, and it's another first down. Yeah, he was in a crack position, which Georgia does a lot with their wide receivers, and then a good play action pass crossed all the way across the, the formation. Plenty of time on first down to throw. This is the first time in a long time Georgia's even been this deep in LSU territory at the 36 yard line. Pressure coming off the backside from knows it and Logan's got him all wrapped up. First sack of the year for Glenn Logan. If you talk to LSU's coaching staff where they think they're least like past LSU teams is in pass rush up front. But that time Glenn Logan won. He beat his man one on one. I think it was Cade Mays, the true freshman that he beat on the play number 77. And a loss of nine. From throws complete this time. The hollow Holloman. Let's check in with Jamie. Well, whatever the message was that Ed Ogeron gave that LSU team coming out of the locker room, they looked like they were shot out of the cannon. But I will tell you what he said. He said, we have to remain on the attack in order to finish this game. He said, the only way we get rid of the bad taste in our mouth is to beat UGA. Now, if he does see Justin Fields, he told me they'll remain in base coverage and they have to hold the edges. Well, it's from at the controls right now. He's one for seven on third down passing. This is a long one. Zone again. From fires. Got a man out there. That's Miko Hardman at the 20 yard line. That was a long throw. Sure was. So Georgia in the red zone are very close. You're on the left hash. You challenge a quarterback to throw the ball to the far sideline. And that's what he did on that one. Actually, that time, Dave Aranda dialed a zone blitz. So he, when you did not get to the quarterback, he was susceptible to a pass. You only had five guys defending. Good looking opening drive right now for Georgia. They spot it at the 21 yard line. First and 10 from play fake to the end zone, too high, and tipped away by Greedy Williams. That's the confidence of a guy that knows he has that extra step anytime he wants it. He doesn't interfere coming right across from the right side of your screen. Watch him cut under the throw and make the play. Beautiful defense. Talk to Greedy yesterday. He's got those long arms and he used them effectively right there.
Fromm trying to get Nauta set up on the other side. And they'll run it here. Swift. A yard, and that's it. Third and nine coming up. Well, I thought Ed Alexander did a great job that time. He's listed as a backup, but he's coming in a lot to plays the no tackle position. That time he ate up the block and then with one hand made the tackle. Well, last time on third down, Fromm had that long throw to Hardman. Let's see what he comes up with on this third down. He's in trouble. Down he goes. Michael Divinity with a sack. Wow, what a spin move. He was matched up against Andrew Thomas, the left tackle. Watch him spin his way into the backfield and make the play. Beautiful play on the left side over here. He spins inside, throws Thomas away. That's throwing a guy over 320 pounds away from you and makes the play. I was going to ask you, had they gained any yardage, was it two down territory? That took all of that away. And now Blankenship will try 40 yard field goal to finally get Georgia on the board. And the kick is good. So it took Georgia into the third quarter, six minutes into the third quarter, to finally get on the scoreboard. Fromm leads the drive that stalls, but they do get three. Let's take a look at the GMC game changer, or changers in this case, Gary. And it was mostly fourth down has been the difference. Remember, Kirby gave up on the field goal try, and Grant Delpit made a great play. That's one win on fourth down for LSU. Then the fourth down quarterback sneak by Burrow for the second win on fourth down. Another quarterback sneak. And then the last one is a handoff on fourth down to Lair and to Lair. Four for four on fourth down has been a big story, and it's one of the reasons the Georgia defense was out there for 45 plays yeah. in the first half. Now Georgia's offense was out there for 12 plays on that last drive, covering 52 yards in just under six minutes before the 40-yard field goal. And Blankenship, the guy that hit the field goal, set the kick away. And almost all of his kicks have been touchbacks this year. Same story there. So LSU will start at the 25. Tomorrow on CBS, see why critics are calling the new drama God Friended Me, heartwarming and a truly original story. God Friended Me tomorrow after 60 minutes, only CBS. It's a bad trend for LSU starting to pop up for LSU. It happened against Florida. They were controlling third down against Florida and finished off the game one for nine. In this game, LSU started out three for five, but they're one of seven on third down sets. Justin Jefferson in motion. Yes, I think we have another false start on so Saki Charles on that left side. He's trying to get a head start on who he's playing over there, and I think it's going to be first and 15. Hey, you're staring at him, and Ball he's star. too big to miss. Offense number 77, <laughs> five-yard penalty, first down. That's Kick. the first assessed penalty against LSU today. And I tell you, the mistakes, the mental mistakes were being on the red side of the field in the first half. LSU cannot let Georgia get back in this game by doing mistakes on their side of the field. That was the little things that got him in Florida last week. Absolutely. A bunch of little things. First and 15. And a little problem in the backfield there. I'm not sure whose it was, but Burrow swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. Here's another little thing. Joe Burrow wanted to throw the ball out on a quick screen, an RPO. Watch the receivers. They don't even look. Joe wants to throw the ball out there. There's nothing there. So he says, well, I got to keep it. And there was nothing there. Had to keep it and eat it. And it's second and 15. Back to back miscues. Burrow looks deep. Now comes back shorter across the middle, complete to Jefferson. Trying to stretch it out to get whatever he can around that 30 yard line. And it'll bring up third down and about five. So here we go. 
the Kirby and Mel Tucker have built this team around winning third down defense. They're one of the last seven is LSU. They better get set up. They weren't. Not even in their stances, but maybe it'll pay off for them. Burrow's got a throw, and it is caught by Jefferson. Wow, what a play. Jefferson had a couple big drops last week, but he's got a couple catches this one. I thought Burrow was giving up on this play. Joe looked, had nothing, wanted to get outside, couldn't get outside, so he finds someone at the last second and delivers it. Big first down catch there. And now a play action he wants, oh, big one. And it's thrown away, incomplete. Jefferson covered by Campbell again. Well, LSU's not taking their foot off the pedal, that's for no, sure. That's exactly what Coach O told Jamie. We have to keep attacking, and they are. Yeah. Hasn't been a turnover in the game except the stopped field goal, which really wasn't a turnover. It was a turnover on downs. This is both set. And he falls forward. That's the other thing Coach Argeron was telling us. Our backs have to fall forward like they used to with Fournette and Geis and those guys. When they watched the films against Florida last week, they told their running backs there were four or five times when you could have get us an extra yard. Brosette's got the extra yard there, first down. Flag on the play. I wonder if Georgia has too many players. I don't think Barnett got off the field. LSU went hurry up, and I think they had 12. There you there go. He, there he is. He's running off, and he takes him a while. You're right, Gary. The, the hurry up is really bothering yes. Georgia. They weren't in their stance earlier. Five-yard penalty results in the first down. You know what? Vanderbilt caught Georgia a couple times in the same thing, forced him into timeouts doing it. And without a substitution there, LSU was free to hurry up and snap it, and they caught him. First down at the 48. Burrow steps up in the pocket, going deep. Man there, overshot him. It was Jamar Chase incomplete. He's had some guys open that he's missed. Yeah, that time the receiver and the quarterback were kind of going different directions that time. Chase wanted to go to the middle of the field, and Joe Burrow threw it to the outside, had no chance. The last two conversions on second down, LSU was able to run the ball far enough to get it into third and medium. Let's see if they can do it again here. Nick Brosette with Burrow in that backfield. Georgia thinking about a blitz off the corner. And now it's an option. Burrow's going to keep it. Nice job. Probably should have pitched it. Yeah, nice job off the edge that time. You got to buy time, buy time for your help to get there and force the pitch late. And it was perfectly defended that time from the outside in. And Tyreek McGee last time did a perfect job. And he took a big hit from a group. A Bulldogs defensively brings up third down and eight. On third and long, the Georgia pass rush has been effective. Let's see if they can do it again. Jontre Kirkland again in the lineup. Number 13 does a little bit of everything. Right now he's a receiver in the slot. And it's Brosette going the other way. And he's short of the first down. Uh, they ran right into the teeth of the blitz that time from Georgia. Overloaded defense that way, and they kept the play on and ran right at it. Georgia overlaid it. You see the blitz to the short side of the field. They went right around the count that time. They're going on fourth down again. Unless there was a timeout before that snap. It was by LSU. LSU. Let's see if LSU thinks about this and kicks it away. This one's a full two yards. We'll find out what Coach O's got planned when we come back. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Smile Direct Club. Pizza Hut. GMC. And by Wheels Up. 
That was the elite United States Special Operations Command para commandos that jump started more than two miles above Tiger Stadium. You talk about wheels up. Right. And they got up to like 120 miles an hour on the way down. And after the timeout, LSU thought better of going on fourth and two. Well, and, and some people might say, why burn a timeout if you're going to punt? But they had to do it because Burrow was going to go for it. I thought so, yeah. The only way to turn him off was to turn the clock off. Josh Groden now to punt this time. He's there inside the 20 specialist, if you will. End over end kick. And it drops at the five. And it's down at the four. Can't do it any better than that. So Georgia's got the ball back. That's the good news for them. The bad news is they've got it at the four yard line. And they need some magic out of number 11. They're down 13. Georgia fans in the state of Louisiana for sure for the last few days, but they don't like what they've seen of the quarterback sacks today, Gary. Yeah, and it started with Clay Logan. He just tosses away Cade Mays on the play. And then Jamie always asked me, what are you looking for when you're at practice? Jamie, what did we watch at practice? We watched this move you're about to see from Michael Divinity coming off the line through. Yeah, that, that was a practice dummy to him because they did the exact thing at practice on Thursday. Coach Joe was the one running that drill because, yes. as you say, 30, 40 years in coaching on the defensive line, he knows what they need to do. Man, if there was, wasn't a case where practice makes perfect, I don't know what does. See, keep showing up. We'll teach you something every week. Exactly. I like learning from you. George's tailback is in the end zone, DeAndre Swift. Fromm fakes it to him, loads and throws and almost intercepted by Delpit. Boy, he is quickly becoming one of the top safeties in college football. Yeah, yeah I think he's there. <laughs> he made the great play on fourth down on him. This one, he reads it again very quickly and just retreats and one-handed makes the stop. Trust me. This one would have been completed if the guy doesn't have a 36 inch vertical and get his hand on it. He leads the team in sacks and interceptions. That's a rare combination. Now Fromm is in the end zone in the shotgun as well. Second down and 10. Jake throws near sideline. Oh, it should have been caught by Hartman right. and he dropped it. Can't throw it any better than that. And Mika knows it. There's some great safeties in the Southeastern Conference yeah. over the last 12 years. These are the 12 years I did and covered all of these players. And I'm telling you, this guy can line up with any of them. And all of those guys played in the NFL. Some still are. Yes, they are, in including the oldest one, Reggie. Final time, Nelson. Not a good spot for Jake Fromm, third down and 10. Four-man rush, throws, is it intercepted? Very close to it, Christian Fulton got up with the ball, but I think it's incomplete, and now Devin White pushes no, Terry think, Godwin. Right, it may be he just took it right off his hip. He says he has it. Yes. Freshman Christian Fulton, former five-star player, he's the freshman, let's see if it hit the ground or not. Wow. Boy, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't either. I didn't see it bounce there at all. The ruling on the field is an interception. Well, if they ruled it an interception, it's not going to change, I don't think. Not yet. I got to see one more time with the ball. Does the ball hit the ground right? Ooh. I don't see it hitting the ground, do you? The ruling on the field is an interception. The previous play is under review. Does the nose of the ball hit the ground and force it back into the stomach? I think it might have hopped right there. If it did, that's where it happened. Boy, these are too close. I'm usually like 100% sure on these. <laughs> and, and often 100% wrong. I was going to say, you're 100% one way or the other. I don't know if there's a, a, another look, but those two looks, I could not change it. If I was the replay, I'd go back to the, my... Theory down there in the goal line. 
Got to go back just a little farther on the play. It's right. before that. As if the point hit right. Oh, no, I don't I think don't it, did. it did. It's like two inches from the ground. I tell you, right it did there. not hit there. I don't think so. No. I don't know if there's anything from a front angle that it hit before now. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. That's an interception. The call on the field was an interception. I think it's an interception. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, LSU. What a play. It looked like the ball was going to hit, but he raised it before it hit the ground. So we had talked about no turnovers. Now we have one. Only the third interception thrown by Jake Fromm this year, and it gives LSU a golden opportunity here at the Georgia 23. And remember that second down play when Hardman had the ball, 50-50 ball, and dropped it. Edward Zila, that's a face mask in the middle, I think. Although I see no flags. He's straightening it all out. That's for exactly. Sure. Remember Miko Hartman had that catch on the sideline. He was clapping his hands. He knew he should have had it. And it led to the interception. Edward Zilair. Tough run on the inside. Got it inside the 15 by a foot or so. When we were talking, oh, they're going to go faster. You watch it. Third and short. They're going to get up to the line of scrimmage and run the same play again. Remember, Joe Burrow has the option of keeping it if he wants to. Third down and a short two. Uh, I don't it. think he got no, it. No, I don't either. Jordan Davis, one of the first guys there from the defensive line. Yeah, one of those true freshmen that was down on the scout team early in the year and has now come out big tonnage in the middle. I don't think it matters if it's fourth down or not. Burrow's up the line going, I'm, I got this. And they're four for four. For five. So five for five. Remember, one of them were counting as the fake field goal, and then four of them on offense. Ball to the corner of the end zone. Jump ball. Incomplete intended for Stefan Sullivan. DeAndre Baker was covering. Yeah, and I like a good no call this time, too. These two guys are fighting for the ball. Two big, tall, tough guys, and let them fight. You mentioned earlier Sullivan's listed at 6'7, and Baker had to go up as high as he could to stay with him. Second and 10. Edward D. Lair pounds it down to the six. Well, you know, we've talked about the Georgia offensive line being able to get their hat on Devin White. But now the LSU offensive line, they gave up a couple sacks. You're going to have that on third down. But they've been doing well. Look at the yardage in this game that LSU has rushed for. They're going close to, what, three? No, no, 150 yards and running the ball already. Can the Georgia defense get a stop? Third down and four. Number four, Nick Brosette with Burrow in the backfield. Burrow looked over to him, throws it that way. Oh, oh, he's lucky. And he lucky. He, he's fortunate because he threw it like with his third choice. He had no conviction in that throw at all. And he's lucky he got away with it. J.R. Reed got a hand on it at the end. Right there. Yeah, like six more inches the other direction, and that would have been a disastrous interception. You have to be conviction when you throw the ball in the end zone. That was like second, third thought. Cole Tracy will try a 24-yard field goal. He's perfect three for three today. And he's still perfect. Tack on three more for LSU. Three minutes remaining in the third quarter. Time is of the essence if you're a Georgia fan. 19 to 3. Next Saturday, Home Depot SEC on CBS features number one Alabama. With my Heisman favorite, Tua Tagovailoa taking on Tennessee. Third 
Saturday of October. The best game for the best conference kicks off State Farm College football today. Zook and the guys, three Eastern on CBS. Big win for Tennessee today. Yeah, for sure. Our aerial coverage is sponsored by State Farm. Here to help life go right. There isn't anybody that would have picked that game for Tennessee, no. right? Uh -uh. Well, I got a question. Which quarterback do you pick now if you're Kirby Smart? Do you go to Justin Fields or do you stay with Jake Fromm, who struggled today? I, I would mix it up. I, you know, I would. I think I'd get want to give this LSU defense a different look. Trouble is, if it works, you really got a problem. You got an issue, don't you? <laughs> you got an issue. Yeah. Let's see who comes out to the 25 with the rest of the group. I think it's going to be Justin Fields. Just got a gut feeling it's going to be. It does look like it. Yes. You're right. Just for a spark, just to give this LSU defense a different look. The trick here is you can't be one dimensional against this good elite defense. You got to force LSU to play pass and run, he not just played, one way. He only played one snap against Missouri. This is his second snap today. And he got maybe two yards. And then he got swarmed under. And, and they're basically playing him as a wildcat quarterback. See, I mean, he was back there. They were playing him run all the way. And Fromm comes back on the field. So he had two snaps, two runs, and number 11 comes back out. Yeah, I, that's not how I'd use him. If I'm going to use him, I'd use him. Holyfield behind Fromm. Isaac not on the tight end in motion. Play action from throws on the sideline. Caught by Nauta and a first down. A little wheel route. Had man-to-man -man coverage from Devin White, number 40. And Devin had no idea where the football was. Isaac Nauta had complete advantage when the ball was in the air. Nauta, the leading receiver for Georgia today. That's his third catch for 47 yards. And a first down in LSU territory at the 49. Under two to play in the third. Late blitz coming from Devin White. Franz going deep sideline. And Riley Ridley is looking for a flag. And did he get one? He might have on Greedy Williams. Greedy saying it wasn't catchable. It might be because he was getting a little greedy over there. That's well, it. When, when you do it on that bench, you better be good at it. Could have get caught all the Pass time. Interference. Defense number 29, 15-yard penalty. Correction, spot foul, automatic first down. Grabbed his jersey early and kept a hold of it. The face mask yeah, even didn't he? Exactly. Yeah, that was an easy one. That could have happened on either bench. It would have been called. So Kirby Smart. On the sideline, Georgia first down by penalty. Demetrius Robertson in the lineup for Georgia right now. Here's a flea flicker from throws on the sideline, and it's Robertson. He hasn't made an appearance since that end around that went for about 82 yards or 72 yards earlier this season. Well, a touchdown. The transfer from California, you're right. Remember, they've given it to him before. Now they wheel him up the sideline and uh, wide open on the play. No chance. John Battle was supposed to have him, but he didn't have him. The ruling on the field is a completed pass. The They're going to see if his feet review. were in bounds. Well, I he think. bobbled it just a bit. Let's see if he had control of it before he went out of bounds. Plus, he was backpedaling as yes. well. Let's see if we can see the ball being bobbled or not. Not a perfect throw. He had to stop. Oh, by the does he have his heel on the, out of bounds by the time he secures the catch? One. Yes, that's going to come back. You see the ball in midair when his left heel comes on the ground. Bobble, catch it, foot out of bounds. It's coming back. So what would have been a huge play and a first down. And, and it was a poor throw. But when you got a guy that wide open, you just don't want to overthrow him. If you catch it cleanly, it's going to be a catch. You catch it twice. 
not enough time to get that foot down going backwards. Now, we kind of rode the re replay officials earlier for not getting that short yardage one. <laughs> but I think overall, they're grading out pretty good here. You know, they've, they've had the close ones on the goal line, the fourth down plays, and I think they'll call this one the right. The interception call was a good call. Yep. George is backing up. There's 100,000 here. There's roughly... 15 to 20,000 Georgia fans, so that means 80 to 85,000 people thinks it's no catch. <laughs> Officially 102,321 here with us today, which is another sellout and always is. Well, that's one, if you're Jim Chaney, the offensive coordinator, you're hitting yourself in the head. You bring them in, you scheme it perfect, you get the matchup, you get a touchdown play, After review, nothing. The receiver bobbled the ball prior to uh, possessing it inbound. Therefore, it'll be second down. The ball will be spotted on hash five. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to one, four, three. One, four, three on the game clock. So the ball comes back to the 35 or it's second down at 10. Georgia with three receivers to Jake Fromm's left all in a bunch. With Hardman, Ridley, and Holloman all there. They give it to DeAndre Swift. Swift, maybe four, Grant Delpit. Again, the safety on the stop. Right, and he's uh, in this box, in this situation, because of the three wide receivers. Instead of having it seven or eight men in the box, it's six or seven. So he was really the six and a half player in the box making the play. Running out of time in the third quarter here. Third down and six. At the 31 of the Tigers. Georgia in desperate need of a third down conversion. Zone again. From looks back to his left, throws short across the middle to Swift. Swift, first down. Nice job by DeAndre Swift that time. Get in front of the quarterback so he can see you. When he rolls out to his right, your job is to get in front of him. The only way you can see is you work hard to get in front of them, and Swift did just that. Almost had a face mask at the end of that play. 45 seconds left in the quarter. First down for Georgia at the 23-yard line. Justin Fields back in the game. Along with Holyfield in the backfield. And it's Elijah Holyfield. And again, a power run. Yes. And he's still going. And this is the reason I thought they would use Justin Fields this season. Because with him in the game, the running game works better for everybody else. You've got to protect the Wildcat quarterback running the ball. So what happens when you give it? You have one less man to stop the run. Got an LSU player down under that pile. And you can see the offensive line fired up. That's actually two players down right now. Ed Alexander and John Battle. Both were battling to get Elijah Holyfield on the turf where it's first and goal when we come back. Second time today, big Ed Alexander, all 330 pounds of him, has had to take a little time to get off the field. Meanwhile, that run by Elijah Holyfield, number 13, was good for 13. And the ball is right at the 10 yard line. So it's first and goal. Now you wonder if you stick with Fields because is he more dangerous inside the 10 yard line with the running quarterback in the game? He stays in. And he stays in with Elijah Holyfield. Same set. And remember, LSU's playing him as a tailback. Holyfield. Heading to the goal line, end zone, touchdown, Elijah Holyfield. And I think they got to go for two here to make it an eight-point game. Well, this is a guy that got him there. And another angry run where he takes Delpit and company and Fulton as the last man into the end zone with him. 
Jake Fromm coming in for the two point play. Trying to make it a one possession game here in the waning seconds of the third quarter. They come up to the line in a hurry from the pitch. Now it's an end around. And it's DeAndre Swift and he's short. Devin White made the tackle. Well, they faked the Philadelphia play from the Super Bowl and he kept it. It was the fake throwback to the quarterback. Give it a little work and LSU says, no way, we're not falling for it. You could see anything at two-point play and LSU defended it. Adam Zucker in New York with his Zaxby's update. South Carolina trailed AM 16-0. Got half of it back. Then they go to the flea flicker. Jake Bentley up for grabs to Chavis Dawkins. He gets it. He gets the touchdown. They're two for two on two-point conversions. AM ball early fourth. Nash Gary. Well, Zook, we had a Jake with a flea flicker a few minutes ago here that didn't work out so well, but it did end up with an Elijah Holyfield 10-yard touchdown, his fourth on the ground this year. And it's a 10-point game. Devin White stopped the two-point conversion for LSU. And this kickoff's returnable if he chooses to, but he doesn't. Edwards Elair will take a knee. And our Chick-fil-A pylon cam is going to show you the end of that two-point attempt by number seven, DeAndre Swift, coming right at you. And Fulton and Devin White are there to take him out of bounds. <laughs> wow. That's pretty cool. That's how it that's how it looks up close, just like that. Big men hitting big and fast men. LSU needs to do better on first down. The second half, they've had five plays in the third quarter. They've got five total yards. We talked about how they got back in sync on second down, but they've been losing on first down. They got a fullback in there in an eye formation right now, Tory Carter. The throw is going to be out to Jefferson on a wide out screen, and JR Reed's defense. got that smelled yep, out pretty good well. Defense. And that'll bring the third quarter to a close. A big 15 minutes coming up. Can LSU pull an upset? 19 to 9. We'll return to Baton Rouge right after this message and a word from your local station. Uga on the road. His team is down 10 as we start the fourth quarter. The Tigers of LSU trying to pull an upset. And they open quarter number four with a second down and seven at their own 28 yard line. Burrow rolls to his right, throws on the run, oh, knocked man. down, incomplete. So it's going to bring up a third and seven as we welcome you back. A lot of football left, 10 point ball game, and. Uh, Georgia at least has not been played in the fourth quarter. Hadn't had to play anybody in the fourth <laughs> quarter this year. They got to play some people but, now. But they were champions. And you, you, they know on the road it's going to be tough. They played in big football games. It's not going to be easy to finish this game if you're LSU. Almost picked off over there, intended for Justin Jefferson. That's two straight passes that could have been interceptions for Georgia. And so Georgia's going to get it right back. Yes, they are. I mean, it's tough to put away a champion. And at that time, if he wasn't held by Justin Jefferson's uh, uh, his arm, I think Baker would have had that one. Miko Hardman back there for Georgia saying, just give me a chance to touch it. Well, I think he's going to get one here, don't you? Unless Zach Von Rosenberg hits it a mile in the air, he might have a shot. And it is on the fly for Hardman. Trying to get to the edge, 45 midfield into LSU territory inside the 40. Just what the Georgia team needed. And Jeremiah Holloman did a great job of not clipping the defender on that play, getting in front of it, and making the clean block to get Holloman out of his way. Georgia's Hartman defense got the stop. Their punt returner got him a big play. They still trail by 10. It's time for our Exxon Mobile game recap. Matchup of number two and number 13 in the country here in Baton Rouge. Georgia going for a fake field goal. Wouldn't they love to have that one back right now? Score would be 19 to 12, but they failed on fourth down. Meanwhile, LSU thriving on fourth down today, including a sneak 
them. Less than a yard for Joe Burrow. Burrow a big hookup of 50 yards to Jefferson got him in field goal range again and then when they have field goal range they don't miss at least this guy doesn't Cole Tracy perfect four for four today. Jake Fromm, a third quarter interception in Georgia territory a sensational interception. And then they finally got something going on offense giving it to Elijah Holyfield who got him down to the 10 and then took him in from the 10. And that's where we are right now at 19 to 9. They're going to come back with Jake from the effectiveness of Justin Fields as you look at Kirby Smart who's making all these decisions. You know he had an idea he had a game plan to go for the fake field goal. He had the look you go with it. He's used both quarterbacks. He's making all the decisions here to get his team into this football game back into this football game. Most points George has been down in 12 years in this quarter in this situation. But they've got their best starting field position as well at the 38 yard line. Brian Harry and behind Jake Fromm. They're going to give it to Miko Hardman trying to sweep. And all over that is John Battle along with Devin White. No game. Yeah, the last time we saw John Battle, he was walking off the field injured. Well, he walked back down and made a great play. Again, stay outside, know where your help is, and then force and make the tackle. And now Justin Fields comes back out at quarterback. On a second down and 10 as Jake Fromm goes to the sideline, at least for this snap. And the reason the value of Fields is that the LSU defense has to play him as a runner and it makes the other runner more dangerous. Two tight ends in there. They'll give it off to Brian Harry and he hesitated for a moment and Devin White wrapped him up and he got help from his friends. Got a positive gain out of what could have been nothing. And now it's coming up to third down and six. From back in fields out. At the 34 yard line. Hardman in a slot to the right side. That's where Riley Ridley is as well. Corner blitz may be coming. It is. Holyfield picks it up from looking. Oh, you got it too long. Got to throw it. Now you're out of field goal range. A loss of it's nine. I say, you see Kirby right there. I gave you the ball. We were in field goal range. I can't have you take me out of field goal range. This should have gone from a 10 point game to at least an attempt to make it a seven point game. Instead, it's Kamarda to punt. He's had trouble keeping it in the field of play at times this year. Try to punt it down inside the 10. We'll see how he does with this one on fourth and 15. And whistles blow this one dead. Yeah, not a big deal. Probably delay a game. You know, you put Jake Fromm in, plenty of experience. Kicking team, five yard penalty, remains fourth down. The only thing I could think about is it going through your head since you're switching quarterbacks and now it's your opportunity to make a play. You want to make a play. Yeah. Just try a little too hard. Camardo's end over end punt taken around the 13 yard line by Giles. LSU, they've made life rough for Jake Fromm today. Another sack that took him out of field goal range. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Walt Disney World Resort. Kia Forte. Verizon. And by Chick-fil-A. Some aerial shots of Baton Rouge and Tiger Stadium. Don't forget, later in the game, play the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. Well, if, if I'm LSU, I'm challenging my offense. Can you run the ball? 
He ran for 110 in the first half, only 33 yards in the second half. And remember, the last two passes Joe Burrow threw were nearly intercepted. Georgia has shut down LSU's running attack in the second half. Edward Zelair is the guy in the backfield right now from the 14. As Burrow will give it off to him, and this is a good run, and Edward Zelair into the secondary. LeCount's got to bring him down, but it's a big gainer. You can almost feel it. They know if you're LSU, I'm in that huddle if I'm Joe Burrow, and I'm saying if we put a touchdown on the board, this is our game. It makes it a 17-point game. One drive, and we're going to win this, baby. Now, I, it doesn't mean George is going to think that way, but if I'm Ellis, that's what I'm selling if I'm Joe Burrow. Edward Zelair, who's always kind of been in the shadow of Darius Geis since middle school because they went to the same middle school and Catholic High here in Baton Rouge. Today, he's coming out of that shadow. Here's a throw out to the fullback, Carter. Doing a little bit of everything right now. We used to call this play 626 fullback flat. We had it in my first year of NFL football, and everybody's got it. You fake to the tailback, and you slip the fullback out into the flat, and Kevin Mack catches the ball and goes for 10 yards. I mean, <laughs> Tony Carter, I'm sorry. Tony Carter yeah, in that case. I was thinking Cleveland Browns. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're having a flashback. <laughs> so now they can utilize some clock by huddling a little bit here with 11.20 to go. And another first down for the Tigers at their own 43. Edward Zelair again covering that ball up with both hands. Georgia tracks him down from behind, but he got about three. So they go back to the ground game like Gary said they would or should or to see if they could. And right now they are. Anytime you get a would, should, could on one play, you know you got the right <laughs> direction going there. 164 on the ground, and Georgia came in third in the SEC, getting up only 113. Now you also think clock. You're in no hurry here if you're LSU. Jefferson in motion. Play fake, Burrow loads it. Going deep middle, got a man. Jefferson on the catch. In between two defenders. Well, I think Richard McCount, number two, the safety, thought he had it. I thought he thought that he had an interception on the play. Tyson Campbell was beat, but the free safety was standing right there. I thought when Joe Burrow threw it, he was crazy, but he got away with it. Got it to the 18-yard line. Now the toss sweep. Edward Zelair heading toward the goal line. Did he get in? Not quite, but he's close. And you know, Tony Carter caught a play, pass play, and this time he leads the toss sweep, and the hurry up has given Georgia problems. Does he get in? Pylon Cam as he does the splits. Yeah, That's his right knee was down. I think it's short. Right knee down right there, ball short of the line, and then he spins in. They line it up again, that close. Burrow again, that close. Touchdown, LSU. And Georgia's dream of staying unbeaten and number two in the country is fading quickly in Baton Rouge. You knew this one was coming. And after Joe makes the touchdown, he comes back out and beating his chest. Remember, after last week, he was the guy that everybody said lost the game. He had to gut it up and come back and play this week. Cole Tracy's point after is good. When you're leader of the team, you show him you lead the team, and he did it. And now do Project Smarter, presented by the Home Depot. Smart to have a quarterback like this guy. And you know, what do you do when you're building a toolbox? The first thing you buy, if you're smart, is a hammer. <laughs> and when you're in fourth down, 
and you got it that much, you just hammer it home. And three times in this game, LSU has used a hammer, the first tool you buy in the toolbox, to make fourth down and make touchdowns. And Joe Burrow, three rushing touchdowns today. And the sideline going wild with LSU with a nine and a half minutes to go and a big lead. Coming out. Nicole Hardman trying to make something happen. He ran right big that collision. Tackle. And now he lost the ball. LSU, I think, has got it. Might have been the kicker, Atkins. They got the ball, LSU does. Holy cow. It was Patrick Queen, number eight, that had the hit on Hardman. And I was impressed with the way Miko Hardman ran right through that tackle. But bad things happened after that. The ball popped loose. And then the guy that ends up with it, did anybody touch the ball when any part of their body was out of bounds? Atkins is out of bounds. Does he come back in and establish himself? Yeah. Looks like LSU is going to snap it before anything can happen. Wow. At the 14 on a turnover. Nick Brossett. Short game. So you stand around all game waiting for a kickoff return, and you finally get one. It's the wrong way for Georgia. And then your kicker recovers it. Yes. A stunned Georgia sideline right now with nine minutes to go. This will shake up the SEC in a big way. I still think both teams will control their own destiny the rest of the way. Taking all of that clock down to two seconds. And set hit immediately by Natrez Patrick. Might have gotten a yard out of it. And it's third down. Nico Hartman on the sideline. Just tried to make something happen. Remember his 27 yard punt return earlier went for naught because they had their best starting field position Georgia did and they didn't get anything out of it at the 38 yard line. So he had a good punt return previous play kick return not so good. Yeah you can't you can't blame a guy bringing a kickoff out no. his speed down the score away it is you got to try that. And now LSU is going to take a timeout as they took all of that clock. First charge down out of the half. 750 remaining here. Quarterback Joe Burrow leading the charge for LSU today from the state of Ohio. Big Cleveland Browns fan. He kind of likes the way the guy for the Browns plays. Yeah, I asked him, you kind of got that personality like Baker Mayfield, and the Georgia fans know what trouble he gave them in that game in the semifinal and his antics and his leadership. But Joe was also a team and the Ohio State team when Baker planted that flag at Columbus and he said I hated him then but now that he's with the Browns I kind of love the guy he has that personality that leadership personality of uh, I want it all on me and big Joe Burrow has brought it to this team today as he ever third down and eight right here at the 12 yard line oh the tight end in motion they just keep it on the ground Brosette the safe plays wrapped up by Jordan Davis and so the guy that is perfect on the day probably coming out for another field goal attempt. There's a flag down though. Illegal formation against the offense. More than four players in the backfield. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. So the guy that's been Mr. Automatic so far for the most part, Cole Tracy, comes out. He already won the Fred Mitchell Award for the best non-FBS kicker when he was kicking at Assumption College where he hit 68 field goals. 
And now he says he wouldn't mind being the Groza Award winner. Nobody's ever been able to do that because he transferred here. And right now he's on a pretty good roll. I got a feeling that'll be an Aflac question in a few years. Yeah. Don't you think if he does both? Chris Carney, my buddy, who put that Fred Mitchell Award together, gave me that nugget last night. And he's still perfect. Five for five. Well, it's obviously going to take three touchdowns. That's a whole lot to ask with seven minutes and 20 seconds remaining. After that, Nicole Hardman fumble on a kickoff return for Georgia. LSU didn't have to go very far. Four plays, two yards, used two minutes, though. And they got another field goal to tack three more on. Yeah, they were not going to give up those three points. They wanted to make it a three touchdown lead. Hardman will just let this one sail into the end zone. That'll be interesting to see who comes out to play quarterback for Georgia. It's going to be Jake from. Because now they know they have to pass. It's not that Justin Fields can't pass, but they haven't let him today. Yeah, I actually was thinking the opposite. I was thinking they might let Justin Fields go in there and just try to scramble and run and throw around and see if he could get some experience throwing the ball. Because if they're going to come back and win the championship, I think they're going to have to have Fields be more of a weapon than just run the ball when he comes in. From back to Godwin. Terry Godwin, who's been injured a little bit early part of the season. Let's get an update on New York. Here's Zuck. All right, Ness, you know, A&M looking to be a factor in that SEC West race. They're now up 10 at South Carolina. Travion Williams capping an 11 play, 78 yard drive, 26 16 Aggies on the road under two minutes to go. There's a change in attitude in that program, too, huh? Yes, From there is. Over the middle, almost hit the umpire with that one. Riley Ridley says, well, the guy was in my way. Incomplete. Well, the umpire does exactly what he's supposed to do. Once the ball snaps, he moves towards the line of scrimmage. And right in the way of the throw. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was getting at. Yep. DeAndre Swift gets the first down. And we're under seven minutes. And as you mentioned, Brad, it's got to be all hurry up. And Jake's got more experience than Justin Fields. And at the rest of this game, it'll be hurry up and onside kicks. Thomas and the Bennett in the stop. First down. Officials were stopping play. They hadn't gotten the chains moved on the far side. And they still don't have them set, but Fromm's going to throw on the sideline anyway, complete to Riley Ridley. Trying to get a little work done to get it down to the 25. Well, Riley Ridley has been looking over the bench for some throws for about two and a half quarters. And this time he's matched up against the All-American Greedy Williams, but it's a perfect throw from Jake Fromm, the back shoulder throw that he's so good at. They finally got the chain set again. Georgia's trying to go hurry up, and I think they need a younger chain gang. They're yes. having a hard time getting down the field. At the 27. From to the end zone, touchdown, Riley Ridley. And there's the first score they needed. Boy, he, he looked like his brother that time. He faked the corner route. He got on the safety and burned it badly to the middle. Watch him come into the safety, run on battle, fake the out, and just run right across his face. We've seen Kelvin run that one exactly like that. Georgia usually utilized their time very well there. Only took them a minute 20 to get it in the end zone. Blankenship for the point after. 29-16. Blankenship's kick is good. As Georgia goes 75 yards. So now it'll be another decision by Kirby Smart. Does he go onside kick now or kick it deep? We are the birthplace of American public higher education. We are leaders and world-class researchers. Our ideas change lives. We take promising students and turn them into road scholars. We are the committed, 
Because we thrive when the stakes are the highest. We keep at it till we emerge victorious. We are the University of Georgia. Coming up after our game, stay tuned for the CBS Sports College Football Post Game Show presented by Capital One. Adam, Rick, and BJ will have all the highlight scores for you. A look back at this one that is not over yet, but has only six minutes remaining. Yeah, I think they're going to kick it deep. There's still six minutes to go. I put the pressure right on this LSU offense to see if my defense can get a stop as fast as they scored there. I'm thinking that LSU has to be gripping here. Now they've got everybody up close, the Tigers that is, and one lone man back at the 20 is Edward Zeller. You see all 10 guys between the 45 and the 50, and Zeller is all by himself back there inside the 20. So they're anticipating the outside kick. A lot of space if you pooch this one high in the middle of the field. How will they do it? So a line drive. Edward Zeller takes it on the hop at the second team and knocked out of bounds shortly after the 20. Let's take a look at the top 10 today. Alabama playing tonight against Missouri. Georgia's in a bunch of trouble here. Ohio State a winner over the Gophers. Clemson's not playing. And Notre Dame had struggles with Pittsburgh but won. West Virginia. Remember that game West Virginia was supposed to play NC State yes. that might cost them yeah. dearly. Absolutely. And they got stormed out as NC State's undefeated going into the day. Hey, still got a ball game here big time if you're Georgia get a stop and see what happens. Bro set. They track him down but not after he gets a pretty good gain on the play out to the 26. Kirby is going to start using his timeouts and I think rightly so. And he used one right there. Stops things with 549. And we got a Georgia player down as well. I think it's DeAndre Walker. He was cramped up. Jamie told us a little bit earlier and they weren't sure whether he's not he was going to be able to return. He did and now he's down again. Kirby Smart 27 and 7 in his third year. And a lot of people had hopes that they could run the table all the way into the SEC championship game and defend their SEC title. And they may have to run the table now to get to that point if they don't win this game. And right now they're not in good shape. Florida a winner today. They came from behind to win. So it would be a tie atop the division. Kentucky is yet to come on Georgia's schedule as is Florida down in Jacksonville. We'll be there in a couple of weeks. So that's how it looks. Meanwhile, LSU trying to keep the heat on Alabama and trying to bounce back from their only loss in the conference to Florida last week. So how about when we talk to Kirby about his experience here as an assistant coach with Alabama in a big game and he told the story about when it was a late turnover by Alabama. LSU had the ball in plus territory. They got a three and out. There was a personal foul, and all of a sudden, a game that looked like it was going to go LSU's way. We just persevered, persevered, kept playing, and got back in the game with a late screen pass to win it. He said, We maybe shouldn't have won that one, but we did. He's 11 and 1 in this stadium as a coach or as a player. Bro set. And Rosette gets to the next level. Big first down run. Nice cut back that time. Brissette was very patient. Ran with his eyes. Caught all of the flow of the Georgia defense overrunning the play. And a good cutback. Good block that time on the left side of the play by Lloyd Cushenberry, number 79, the center. It's almost a face mask on. Take out Reed, too. And he had his thumb stuck in there, but no one really saw it. But it's going to buy time, and it burned one of Kirby's timeouts as well. They can get it down almost to the five-minute mark, and Burrow uses all of this play clock. And he does a pretty good job of it. And now he's going to keep it himself. Joe Burrow on the run. A stiff arm. And Burrow trying to ice it himself.
tell you, when we met with him, you could tell he had those competitive instincts. When you walk away and you compete at Ohio State for a job and you lose and you say, you know where I'm going to go? I'm going to go to LSU. I know I got to play Alabama. I know I got to play Georgia. I want the challenge. He's taken it and he has come through for this team. What a day for Joe Burrow. A 59 yard run to the four yard line. And it's Bruce set. He's going to walk in the corner. Touchdown LSU. What a performance by the Tigers on their home field today. With those two big runs. To LSU is over 250 yards rushing there at 262. Extra point up and good. And the Tigers of LSU taking command of this game. And Joe Burrow, their leader, did a lot of it. 59 yards to the four, and number four took it in for the touchdown. LSU by 20 with 414 remaining. We saw them win big on the road earlier this year against Auburn. They did that last year and it kind of set them up for the same sort of situation they're in right now. You know, I was thinking of the Auburn team of last season. Remember when they lost that game here against LSU? Everybody said, oh, they're out of it. They're out of it. But they knew they had Georgia and Alabama coming. We did those two games, those two late wins. They would, if they would have won the SEC championship, would have been in the playoffs. Well, that's what LSU has now. They blow that game to Florida, and everybody says, oh, they're out of it. But they have the opportunity to play the number two and the number one team at home. And they've got Alabama coming here to play in this place. The way they're playing today, they can give anybody a game. Absolutely. Mississippi State comes next week and then Alabama. Remember, LSU already in the first month of the season beat two then top ten teams. Now they're taking down number two. So you look at their strength of schedule and who they've beaten, and, uh, you know, there's not many people that no, have done what no. they've done. And you know they, you know they, it was a close, obviously, really close game against uh, Auburn to win there. But any win on the road in the SEC is a big win. Here's Elijah Holyfield out of the backfield, and Delpit puts him down. It does make the East race wide open. I mean, as you look at LSU's schedule, we talked about Mississippi State, and then the traditional bye before Alabama. <laughs> And then they still got A and M on the road at the end, but yeah, they, you, they you worry are, about that later. Yeah, right? you worry about that in a month or so. <laughs> exactly. But boy, is the East wide open now, huh? Jake Fromm throwing deep. That's going to be intercepted. There was two guys there. Greedy Williams wanted it, and John Battle took it away from him. Yeah. I think Greedy Williams was just cruising under the ball, and it bounced off of him, and Battle gets it. Second interception of the year for battle. Christian Fulton had one earlier today. <laughs> Greedy Williams, who also has two interceptions on the season for LSU. Top of the screen. He's not going to bite for anything short. He shows bump and run, but he's retreating all the way, playing the deep ball. And battle took it right away from him. So speaking of the East with Georgia, I mean, that's the story here, too. I remember, this is a team number two in the country. They don't come home again to play in Athens till November 10th right. against Auburn. So they're going to have an off week, and then they get Florida in Jacksonville, and then at Kentucky, both Florida and Kentucky with one loss. Andrew Zeller roughed out of bounds at around the 16-yard line. 
Ed Orgeron has never lost back to back games after losing a game. He's come back and been perfect. And this is going to be the 21st straight October win for LSU here at Tiger Stadium. And I most admire about what Ed has done here at this program at LSU is he's really got this team playing for the name in front of the jersey. I mean, he, you see it in his interviews. He always go Tigers right. at the end of it. Uh -huh. He says it better than I do, but he <laughs> go Tigers at the end of it. And he has really sold these guys on how important it is to play for your teammates, the school, and the state. Let's get another update in New York. Here's Adam Zucker. All right, Ness, number 10 UCF at risk with that 18 game winning streak, but they're up one after trailing by 16. Memphis ball, time running out. Brady White to Tony Pollard. No timeouts left. He's brought down in bounds. Time runs out. UCF's won 19 in a row. AM also a winner by three at SC. See you on the postgame show. We'll see you in two minutes, 20 seconds. I got a question for the guys on the postgame show. How many in a row does UCF have to win before <laughs> the committee takes them serious? Well, they're in the top 10 now, so I, at I least know, they noise. keep winning. Come on, they're going to be in the 20s. Edward Delair holds out of that ball with both hands. I do want to talk about Georgia. I still think they control their own destiny. Come on, let's think about this. If they win out, win the East. Okay, doesn't matter where anybody's ranked, just win the rest of your games. And if you beat an undefeated Alabama team, the SEC champion is going to be in with one loss. It's right in front of you. There's what's left to their schedule three ranked teams, then UMass in their annual battle in state rival Georgia Tech. And down to a minute 30. This might be the end of the two teams from the SEC in the playoffs, though. A lot of stuff will happen have to happen for two teams to get in now. Notre Dame kept their hopes alive today by coming from behind. Coming up tonight on CBS with NCIS followed by Magnum P.I. and then a new addition to 48 hours tonight only CBS. Thinking about Ed Orgeron the story he told yesterday he and his wife Kelly were going home the other day. They stopped and picked up some White beans and rice. He made a little mixture and he said, yeah. I got home. I didn't have anything to eat it with. And my, something smelled really good. He said, my neighbor was cooking, grilling out. He said he came over and he had like a blue cheeseburger, but it was only a half a burger. <laughs> he said it was great with my beans and rice. And then the guy said, you know, coach, we enjoyed being at the game last time when we sat in the box. He said, if you want to come to the Georgia game, you better bring more than a half, half a hamburger. A burger. Well, I'll tell you what, LSU played more than a half a game and they deserve this one. Yeah, this was a steak day. You bet. Georgia falls to six and one and four and one. LSU climbs to six and one and three and one. So there'll be a shakeup in the top 15 in the country as LSU will move forward in the rankings and Georgia will fall. Big, big home win for Coach O and he's with it. Uh, he's with Jamie right now down on the field. Coach, once again, we find ourselves in a melee in a game that you guys weren't expected to win. How did you get this one done? Tremendous team effort. Our guys were hungry all week. A lot of respect for Georgia. We know we have to play our best ball. This is our best game by far of the year. When did you know you took this game over? You know, I just felt that the whole game, when we came out in the first half to play the way we did, we could physically stand with them. We stopped their running in the second quarter. I felt good about it. Joe Burrow, the toughness, the way. I know what people want to tell him how to slide and how to get out of bounds, but his toughness today really carried you guys? No question. Uh, Joe's tough. He's a leader. Give credit to the offensive line. This is a great defense to put the amount of points we had. Just a tremendous team win. Coach, thank you. Congrats. Go Tigers. You knew she was going to wait for that last two <laughs> words. Go Tigers, and it'll probably cost them a little bit by the crowd on the field. But it's time now for the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. And I said, don't you think Georgia would like to have this one back? Fake field goal attempt. Rodrigo Blankenship trying to get to the first down sticks and then lost the ball. LSU took over and then took over the game, really. And here's how Chris Blair called it on the LSU Tiger Radio Network. Smart far side kicking towards the south end zone. 
on the year. He's 9 of 11 on field goals, and it's a fake. They pitch it, coming to Blankenship near side, and he will be tackled. Lost the ball. Tigers may have it. They do at the 17-yard line. Bulldogs try to pull the gadget back, and it blows up in their face. Devin White comes up with the loose ball as they pitched it back to Blankenship. He was dead to rights at about the 15-yard line. Tigers had it all smothered up. And that's the scene at Tiger Stadium as they rush the field after picking off the number two team in the country by 20, 36 to 16, the final score. That's going to do it for us. We'll be in Knoxville next week. Hope you join us then. For Gary Danielson and Jamie Erdo, I'm Brad Nessler saying so long from Baton Rouge. Final score, 36-16, the Tigers with the upset. The CBS Sports College Football Post Game Show presented by Capital One is up next right after these messages. So long from Baton Rouge.